We've all felt tired after a fast before. It's no fun. Okay, you fast all day, you've got all this energy, and then you eat, and you practically fall asleep in your plate. Okay, you have no energy to actually hang out with your family when you do finally get home and you've been fasting all day. So I want to address what's causing this, but I want to skip through that as much as I can and get straight to the point and give you four ways that you can combat the fatigue after a fast, that so you don't have to deal with this. It doesn't have to be this way. You can harness the energy of a fast and you can keep it going throughout so you maintain that nice continuity. You're tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel with new videos on Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday. I ask that you go ahead and hit that red subscribe button and then hit that little bell icon so you get notifications whenever I go live or post a new video. So the first thing we have to talk about is the obvious reason of why you get totally tired after you eat. That's gonna be simple postprandial fatigue. Okay, that's just where you have a diversion of blood flow. This is no surprise. You guys probably know about this. All the blood that is normally circulating through your body and your brain is now diverted over to the digestive system. This takes energy. Okay, but that's not fun. We wanna get down to the nitty gritty of stuff. Where things really get interesting is when we start looking at insulin. Okay, we know that carbohydrates are going to spike your blood glucose, which therefore is gonna spike your insulin, and that could cause a rise and fall of blood sugar. Sure, that's gonna make you tired, but it's not just about the blood glucose. It actually goes much further than that. You see, when you're fasting, you're very insulin sensitive. And what that means is that whatever you do eat is going to have a compounded effect because you're so sensitive. Okay, you haven't been eating all day, so the second you do eat, your body just goes into hyperdrive to try to react to whatever you just ate. It's not bad, it's just the way it is. Okay, so if you are consuming carbohydrates, then sure, you're gonna have a bigger rise and fall of blood glucose than you ordinarily would. But a lot of you don't even eat carbs after you break a fast, so why are you getting tired? Well, more than likely, it still has to do with insulin. You see, insulin, whether you consume carbs or not, is still going to be present. Okay, it's gonna be present if you consume fats, it's gonna be present if you consume carbs, and to some degree, it's even gonna be present when you consume proteins. Okay, and the main reason that insulin's going to make you tired is because insulin blunts what is called orexin. Orexin is a neurotransmitter that promotes wakefulness. Now, I'm not talking about energy, I'm talking about wakefulness. Let me help you understand sort of that delineation there. Okay, energy is where you just, you, you have energy, you just, you feel like you could go out and run and sprint, but maybe you're still tired, right? You can still be foggy, you could still be tired and sleepy, but have energy. Wakefulness is where your body can still be fatigued, but you're awake. A perfect example of when orexin is high is when you have insomnia, when you're laying in bed and you feel tired, but your mind is so awake. Okay, to some degree, we want orexin to be there. To some degree, we don't. We want the perfect balance. But as soon as we eat and we spike our insulin, orexin plummets. And that makes us feel sleepy and just generally fatigued. Not something we always want, especially right when we're getting home, right? Now, there's other things that happen too. Insulin also upregulates the concentration of what's called melanin concentrating hormone, or MCH. And MCH has a big effect on putting us to sleep. MCH is a big regulator of that. Okay, so you might be wondering, like, what the heck? I'm only eating like fats and protein when I break my fast, so then why am I even having a spike of insulin? What people don't often understand is that fats spike your insulin a lot too, okay? When you consume fats, they trigger something known as acylation stimulating protein, ASPs. Okay, these ASPs indirectly stimulate insulin spikes. So by default, we do still spike our insulin. And remember, because you've been fasted, you're extremely insulin sensitive. So the fats that you do consume can be spiking your insulin, okay, which therefore can inhibit orexin, can upregulate the MCH, and make you very, very tired. So without further ado, let's talk about how to combat this. How do we get around this? My first solution is going to be for those of you that do consume carbs. Okay, if you're a carb consumer and you're not keto, then this one's for you. You're gonna wanna consume chromium when you break your fast. Trust me, it makes a big difference. Usually anywhere from one to 3,000 micrograms of chromium does the trick. And here's what chromium does. Inside our cells, we have something known as a GLUT4 transporter. And it sits inside the middle of our cell. And then when our cells see glucose or insulin, that GLUT4 transporter moves to the outside of the cell to greet the carbs and let them come in. So I want you to sort of view it as like a Walmart greeter, okay? Moves to the front of the door, it says, hey, how are you, come on in. Okay, that's what GLUT4 does. Now, a lot of times GLUT4 doesn't get activated for whatever reason. Chromium makes it so that the GLUT4 gets activated a lot easier through various genetic pathways. Now, additionally, chromium also gives you more GLUT4 transporters. So you get more, but you also get 
more of them that are active. So chromium is really, really powerful. What this is going to do, it's going to make it so that when you do consume the carbs, that glucose is going to go straight from your bloodstream and right into the utilization mode, rather than floating through your bloodstream, staying high, and then rapidly dropping when you're not expecting it. It makes it nice and controlled. Okay, So that's going to be for those of you that are consuming carbs. You can also get the foods that I would recommend that you eat during your eating window by checking out my Thrive fasting box down in the description. So Thrive Market makes it so you can get your groceries delivered right to your doorstep. But the cool thing is, I've developed a good relationship with Thrive where I've actually created specific fasting and keto bundles. So literally down in the description, there's a link that you can check out my Thrive box that has different foods and different goodies that I would normally eat during my eating window. Foods that are gonna help support thyroid function with healthy levels of iodine, but also foods that are gonna have levels of chromium in it. That way you're gonna be able to help get more out of the food that you're eating by eating good quality food in the first place. So go ahead and check them out down in the description below after you finish watching this video. Now, for those of you that are not consuming carbs, actually this goes for everybody, but specifically for those of you that are keto or those of you that are low carb, you wanna keep your proteins lean when you break your fast. And I sound like a broken record. If you've watched my videos, I'm big on this. When you break your fast, lean protein. Okay, lean protein is going to be the king. You can eat higher fats a little bit later. See, the lean protein is going to slightly spike your insulin, but not much. But what it is going to do is it's going to desensitize you to the insulin. It's the safest way to blunt that sensitive insulin response and bring it down nice and easy so that the next meal you have, you have a little bit more flexibility. So for those of you that like to break your fast with a super high fat cut of meat, don't get me wrong, I like my ribeyes, I really do, but not right when I break a fast. I usually keep it lean with like super lean ground beef or perhaps some chicken breast or some really other, like maybe a New York or something that's kind of lean or even a filet if I can digest it at that point in time. Sometimes it can be a little bit hard with a steak like that. Okay, you also wanna make sure that you're getting really good quality meat, of course, that's a given super high omega-3 because omega-3s don't store as fat as easily. They go towards what's called the phospholipid bilayer, so they don't store as body fat, they go to support cellular function. Now, if you were to have a high fat meal when you break a fast, you're gonna get that big spike of acylation stimulating protein, which is gonna spike your insulin and you're going to be tired. But again, you can have the higher fat cuts of meat an hour later, but just break your fast with lean protein and that's really it. The next one is gonna be about having a little bit of fiber, a little bit. Okay, and we want a lower fat form of fiber. So usually something like a psyllium. And I want a soluble fiber. Okay, I don't want an insoluble fiber because that's hard to break down. Soluble fiber is okay. It's still hard to digest, but it's hard to digest in a different way. It's hard to digest because it doesn't even mechanically digest. It goes into your system, it draws water in, and it creates sort of a gelatinous like kind of fiber for you. So all you need is like one or two grams of fiber in a soluble form to have a big effect. I'm not a big fan of combining fats and carbs, and I know some people will say if you combine fats with carbs, it slows the digestion of those carbs. That's true, but it also can slow down the fat loss, which I've talked about in other videos. So in this case, a small amount of fiber, small amount of chia, small amount of flax, or better yet, a small amount of psyllium, along with whatever you're consuming, because it is going to make it so that you at least don't have as much of a blood sugar impact. And this fourth reason is flipping things on its head. Okay, this is just giving you a new way to look at fasting. Try fasting from morning to morning instead of evening to evening. Okay, try breaking your fast in the morning and then, first of all, you're not gonna have as many circadian or diurnal rhythms working against you, but you're also gonna have a lot more flexibility to have caffeine. This is something that I've discovered somewhat recently, trying to fast from morning to morning or doing a 36 hour fast where I fast from like, uh, you know, the evening all the way through the next evening and through to the next morning. I actually find that I can break my fast that way and not be nearly as fatigued, but also because I don't mind having some coffee or some tea along with that meal, whereas ordinarily I wouldn't really wanna have coffee or tea with an evening post-fast meal. It'll just keep me up. So that's just a different way of looking at things. So that's four ways that you can get the most out of your fast while still not only keeping lean, but not getting tired. So you can give your family the attention that they deserve or still get some stuff done when you get home from work. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I appreciate your time, and if you have ideas for future videos, put them down below in the comment section. See you soon.